and I will start my PowerPoint. And my PowerPoint will go probably through a third of it and then we'll do a live demo and then go back and do some more PowerPoint and then back and forth. A lot of tools and this is the main thing that changed. I mean, the name boundary stuff is 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 brand new. We've, we've changed uh, every time we've got a new upgrade, the cross section tools changed and uh, gotten a little better each time. Um, SS4 or SS10 wasn't too bad. This one's actually a lot better um, with the cross section parts of it. There's a, uh, it's dynamic now. So if you move your profile um, up or down or anywhere, however you want to move your profile or change the corridor or change templates in it, it's going to reflect that in your cross section. You don't have to go back and recut cross sections every time. So that stuff's kind of cool. Now moving the name boundaries and I'm going to get into all that. It's, it's a little different. So let me start this thing up here. Kevin's thing in my way. All right. Okay. Name boundary tools that I'm going to cover. Chad covered uh, one of them in there for the typical section stuff. I'm going to cover the civil plan, um, the profile, and the cross sections. And I'm going to start off with the cross sections. <clears throat> what is a cross section name boundary? Name boundaries are shapes in 3D and lines in 2D that represent an area or station location of a cross section. You can see in here in the 2D file, we have a line representing wherever we create a cross section. Looks like they're set about 50 foot on this one. On the right side in the model, you'll see that there's a shape representing an area of a name boundary that is gonna slice through the model and give us <coughs> a cross section. <coughs> yes, Shannon. Sorry. Oh, you didn't have none? That was it? You're just so much better than me. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, cross section workflow. How this works is we create a brand new 2D name boundary cross section file. And this is a container file, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, so we like a new new uh, name boundary file. We'll attach our proper coordinate system after we create it. And you've seen how we could do that. We could either grab it from the tool itself or grab it from a file that's already has it assigned. Uh, we're going to reference in the corridors file using a nesting depth of one. And what this is going to do for us is bring in the corridors file and whatever's pertinent to make up that corridors file. So your civil geometry is going to come across, your uh, your terrain. Um, and in our case, we've got Route 54 we're working with, but Ramp 4 will come across as well. And it'll bring across all the 2D and 3D as well with that. So it's a pretty slick tool for using in this situation of creating name boundaries for our cross sections. We'll open the 2D and 3D models. Um, you could do that by the F6 key still, or you can right click and choose plan 3D option. Either way will get you to what you need. But in this case, when you're creating name boundaries for the cross sections, you will need to have a 2D and a 3D model open. Then we'll place some name boundaries out there. And there's some settings that we'll go through to do that. And then we'll create uh, drawing and sheet models. And Chad kind of touched on that a little bit with having a drawing model and a sheet model, and how we do the work in the drawing model. And the sheet model reflects what's in that drawing model. And the sheet models, we, we still have to edit the title block and stuff. And we'll go through some more of that as we go. Um, and then we can edit the drawing model. And the last thing that might, well, actually it's not working, so we all won't talk about that. I might have a slide or two in there later. I'll, I'll talk about it when I get there. But the place name boundary tool, you can get it in a couple different places. Chad touched on that even. Um, I don't think I need to do much in this because Chad touched it all. But uh, the open roads modeling uh, workflow, that's kind of where I like to start with it. Used to change it to the drawing production workflow, but it seems like all the tools that we need are basically right here in this workflow. Yeah, it just depends on what tab you click on. And in this case, we'll want that drawing production tab which is you go after you click that drawing production tab, you'll get the name boundaries and you got the tool in the manager. And we'll talk more on that manager that we talked about earlier. OK, um, when you first open up for the cross civil cross sections, what you want to create, it's the fourth icon on there. That is our civil cross section name boundary tool. We'll select it and then there's a lot of settings in here that we want to go through. Uh, the first one is picking the size of cross sections that you want. And we carried over the 5, 10, and 20 scale that we had from before. And in this case, you can see I picked a 20. And then our detail scale is set by the drawing seed. So you don't have to go change it. It automatically changes as you pick it. 
The next thing is a, a group, and this group allows the user to create different name boundaries, but added to a previous, previously created group, which is a pretty slick thing. So if you've got an alignment and you're using the defaults here, like what we've got 280 feet on each side, and then you're going down your alignment and you realize I need about 100 foot on the left and I don't need that 100 foot on the right. Well, to do that before we would set it up in our settings and it'd be easy to do, but in here with the name boundaries, it's a little different. You're gonna go out and you're gonna create a station range of that default, what you have here, 280 and 280 to a point. And then you can go beyond that point and do another name boundary. Well, when you're doing that name boundary, um, it'll want to change the name of it right now. It's set to Route 54, but it would give it Route 55, 56 every time you added a name boundary. But they added this group in here so that you can pick the, the group and add it to it. So it allows you to take these name boundaries and shift them left or right along your alignment to add more information or remove information. So it's 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 made it a lot better. Uh, when we first went to this, they told us everything was dynamic. And when we moved our name boundaries around, just shifted them, it, it wasn't dynamic. So they came up with this and it, it works pretty good. Um, the name is set by choosing the complex element. So I went out and selected Route 54. It puts it in here. And we're good to go on that. And then you have the left and right offset and it's set by the drawing seed, but can be modified. Move this little thing out. Okay, so it can be modified. And again, on our sheets this time around, Whereas before in SS10, if you were out of range, it would give you an out of range error and wouldn't process any cross sections. If you go beyond these borders, it's gonna still plot your, your element, your information outside the border. So you kind of still wanna use this and stay within there or else you're gonna have it bleeding outside that border and you don't want that. So those numbers are in there for the 20, 10 and five scales. Okay. And again, the left and right can be modified as well. Just keep in mind, you've got 560 feet with this 20 scale to mess with. So whatever you take off one side, you might want to add to the other. And then the other thing, how did it not click? Is the interval. The interval distance is the same as it was before. In this case, I use 50. Most time we use 40 or 100. You can also see there's a vertical exaggeration we don't mess with. Um, the top and bottom clearance deals with when we create these cross sections, it's in the sheet part of it, is how much room we're gonna give between each cross section. And this generally works pretty well, but you can come in here and you can, you can modify that if you want to. And elevation datum spacing deals with um, your elevations that's on the side of your cross sections. And it's set to five on this. We also have down below where you can include the control points, which would be adding all your PC, PT, your vertical points. Anything that's a, a cardinal point will be added if you check this on. If you want even stationing, you'd leave that un, unchecked. Backward facing deals with railroad, so we won't have to worry about that. And here's the create drawing uh, button that Chad alluded to as well about the whole but you don't want to click this right now. We want to wait and you want to make sure you get your show dialog checked on when you do it. So usually I like to do this when I get to the name boundary manager. I'll fill this dialog box out the way it is and leave that unchecked and you'll run through the prompts on your on your um, your cursor and you'll be good to go. And it'll, it'll store all that in that manager and then we'll go plot them later. OK, so. Well, the name boundary transparency, when you first place name boundaries, it, they come out these uh, white blocks out there and you can't see through them and it's kind of a nuisance when you're wanting to see your model. So what we've done is we've set up a transparency to those name boundaries, but it has to be turned on it. We can't get it to stick. So every time we you create a name boundary, you're going to come out here and you're going to go to that view attribute. You're going to slide down to the transparency option and you're going to toggle that on. And then now you can see through your your name boundaries and see the project a lot better. Having as the white blocks is kind of a pain. And now we get to the name boundary manager. This very small button is the name boundary manager. Chad touched on that earlier. It is the link or a link to the functionality of creating cross section sheets and drawing sheet models. So it's an important little bitty button they got there. I don't know why it's so small. They should have it a little bigger, but that's where it's at. In the name boundary manager, 
we've got, in our case, we have some cross-section groups down here. You can see that Route 54 that I created. You also have an all-important delete name boundary group. And sometimes you'll use this. Uh, you'll go out there and you forget to do something. Maybe you forget to set this uh, little icon over here with the little pencil and the squirrely mark. That's a uh, that's important button to have on. So if you run your cross section, you don't have that. You might want to delete the name boundary group and start over. Deleting it from here now will actually delete the save views and everything else with it, the models and everything. So you should be good to go. At one time, it wasn't doing all that, and it was like three or four steps to go back and fix that. Um, the show create dialog. Having this checked on opens the detailed settings dialog. Um, and I'm going to go through that. It's This is really the, the meat and potatoes of getting this all to work. And then the last one, once you get it figured out, is the create cross-section drawing. So that will actually create them. So you'll get your groups created. Your name boundary groups are out there. You'll highlight that raw 54, and you can hit that icon. Or, you know, making sure you have that... Uh, button checked on again that pencil with the squirrely line you want that on and uh, you could either hit that button or you can right click over to route 54 and get that create cross sections from here as well so either way I'm like having options now create drawing at the very top of this box there's a, a mode it's that cross section there's also an option for one sheet per DGN we don't use that at all for our cross sections. We will for plan sheets, and I'll, sh I'll show you that later when we get to it. But for right now, we'll leave that unchecked. So the view name can be edited, but it's highly recommended not to. That view name is going to give us our stationing. Actually, if you look at all these names down through there, because at the very that section that we're in right now, this right here, uh, that's our view. And then we go down to a drawing and then the sheet models. But you want to keep that stationing in there or else you won't have a clue to where you're at in your project. Default settings, you don't want to modify them. They're, they're set up good once you pick the uh, preference from before. And then you have a drawing model name can be uh, edited as well. Again, at most maybe put drawing behind it or, or the sheet behind the sheet model or whatever, but I wouldn't really mess with them. I think the default stuff works out pretty good. And again, the default settings uh, don't modify them. I can see that when I did this, I, I did a 10 scale sheet, as you can see, instead of the 20 that I started with, but no biggie. The other part of this uh, drawing model is selecting an annotation group. And on the next slide, I'll go through it. But here's where you would set it up so that you could see it when you create your cross sections. And then the sheet model name is input here, and it can be edited as well. And again, at the bottom, we have some default settings you don't want to modify. So once this is set up, you would hit the, make sure the open model, if you want to open that last model, but it's going to open the very last model created. If you're not creating sheets, because you can turn it off and not create sheets, if you just want to create your drawing, you could do that. And it will open the very last model that's created, whether it be a sheet or drawing model. Okay. So the next slide is going to go over to annotation, but we want to, we want to set the annotation up before we hit the, OK button. OK. Oh, they're saying something about that. Uh, that open model, so that's in there as well. So the annotation group, if we go look at it in a little bit more detail, you can see we have four of them out here. We have an excess annotation with grid, which gives us our major and minor cross section grid lines. Then we have one without grid, which cross sections are created without the major and minor grid lines, which is good for the end area volume annotation. You don't want all that grid line out there. You just want to see your elevations offsets and you want to see the little box that it creates with all our uh, quantities for the end area volumes. And then we have an excess EAV annotation, which is for the um, end area volume calculation to be plotted to each cross section. Now there's a little bit of a process to do that stuff and I'll go through that. Then you have the annotation, excess annotation with major grid. A lot of people like to turn off that minor grid. In this setup, it's a pain to go through each one of those drawing models and turn off that that minor. So we create, created one with just the major grid. So if you didn't want to see it, you can uh, just choose this and the minors don't get plotted. Okay, now any one of these 
I'm going to show you how you can remove the annotation and then reapply annotation. So if you decide you wanted the minors, you can remove the majors and add the minors. It's a real simple thing to do. So you're not stuck with these as you go along. OK, and Chad kind of went through this a little bit about our view tools and our managed view groups. Um, it allows navigation through the drawing models, the sheet models, the default view, default 3D view, and the all important multi model view. I don't know how many times I've needed that, but uh, you can get that from this bottom left hand tool. I, I pulled it out here so you can see the managed view groups, but uh, Chad kind of went through that where you hit the, the little pull down arrow and up pops all the different um, drawing models and sheet models. And if you look at it, you can see we have a default default 3D and you can see how the icons look. And then you have a multi-model view, which is a combination of the, the views that you use to create either your cross section or your plan profile views. It's whatever views that you had open, it'll go back to that. And that's kind of handy. I like that. Over on the uh, down here at the bottom, you'll see that we have the white icon, which represents sheets. It's just a white box and looks like a little title block in there. And then we have these gray ones, which are your drawing models. And what happens in cross sections is you, you end up getting either one to four different drawing models into that sheet model. In this case, it ends up being two per sheet model. So when you get to your sheet model, you'll see there's two uh, cross sections in there, but in that we can go look at the different uh, drawing models that make up those sheet models. Okay. Oh, and I talk about that multi-model view again, and that's it's really important because you can't get that anywhere else is, except for down on the bottom. I mean, you can always open up your default, hit the F6 key or right click and open up your plan profile, however you need to, but this is slick. Just click it and go. And then, of course, we've got the second way of opening up the models which does um, the same thing except for in this one it does not include the multi-model view so you won't get it in this models tool okay you can see the sheet or the drawing models with the gray and then the sheet models with the white um, also if you clicked on name it will alphabetize this for you and get them in order i kind of liked it the way it came up like this so our model types, the drawing model, each single cross section has its own drawing model. Drawing models can be edited. Changing the annotation, adding labels or removing labels is done in this model. The drawing model displays a dark gray black or dark gray background. So this is what it kind of looks like if you're doing it without the minor grid lines. Boom, you run it, this is what you're gonna get. Now the sheet model combines the drawing models in a plan sheet format, okay? Sheet models can cannot be edited. Only editing the title block is allowed in the sheet model. The sheet model displays a white background, as you can see. OK, so it's taken two of them in here and it's placed those cross sections in there. Looks nice. And then here's your title block. You would have to go back and fill this out, although uh, we're working on the indexing thing still. Part of that sheet indexing has to do with this. And right now it's not at the right place it needs to be. But uh, hopefully eventually we'll get that to work. And that brings us to the end area volumes. So after you've created some cross section, well, with this one, it's a little different. End area volumes um, is a little bit different. So I'm going to go through it. You create a, two, a new 2D name boundary cross section file, and this one's not a container file. And the reason it's not, I'll get to it. Um, we'll attach the proper coordinate system. And this is the part. This is the important part. We reference in all the pertinent design files individually using a nested depth of zero. We don't want anything. Um, on, in this case, we're, we're wanting to get volumes or quantities on Route 54, and we don't want that ramp for quantities to be into that Route 54. If you did, you'd bring it all across. But in this case, just showing you that if you wanted individual quantities from each different corridor, this is what you'd do is you reference everything in at a nested depth of zero. So that means you'd have to bring in everything that is, is needed for your cross section, okay? Again, you'll have to open the 2D and 3D models, again, by F6 or by right-clicking and choosing the plan 3D option. 
We'll place our name boundaries again, create drawing and sheet models, create cut and fill volumes. This is where it gets a little bit different. And then we'll run an end area volume report. And then open the drawing model using um, and annotate using the excess EAV annotation. So there's a lot of steps to this, but it's not too bad. Um, when you open the tool up, or to find the tool, you go to the home again. Like I said, I like to stay in that open roads modeling workflow, but you can go to home and then you go to the civil analysis button and down below you'll see the create cut and fills. So once you hit select that, it's going to bring up this other dialog here where you have the cut and fill feature definition. They're already predefined and set up to match what we need. So what this tool is going to do is it's going to go out and it's going to take our proposed project and create a mesh for both the cut and the fill. Yeah, I think I got that coming here. Yeah. So you'll see uh, this tool creates meshes, blue for cut, red for fill. And you can see what it's doing there. It's mimicking what we've got out there. It's going to drape it over that. And we're good to go. Okay. After you've got the shapes out there, then you got to go out and create a report. And the reason this is, is because when we go into our cross sections, there, there's no way of getting that information into that cross section without doing this report. So again, you're at that home, you're going to civil analysis again, you're going to drill down to that end area volumes report. It's going to give you a little uh, dialogue. All you need to do here is pick the name boundary group that you're working with, and then it's going to create a report. And Bentley provides many different types of volume reports. It doesn't matter. Once you've selected that, you're good to go. And uh, the only thing that you might want to, well, it doesn't matter on that either, but check your tools and your, make sure that you're set up with the proper stationing and everything. So once that's created, and I'll show you what it does when we do a live demo of it, um, it creates this XML uh, file that the tool needs to use so that when we come out here to the annotate drawing model, we can place the quantity table. So to do that, again, we'll go to our drawing production. So I'm still in that same workflow. I'm going to drawing model annotation. Now in the background, I've got a file that's already had some annotation done, but I did it without any kind of grid line whatsoever. So all this had was elevation offset and slopes, everything, everywhere. But now that I've got this open, I want to place my end area volume information. So I'll hit that drawing model annotation button. Do I want to do all the models? In this case, I do because I just placed it out there, so I want all of them. And then I'll slide down and pick the annotation group that I want to place out there, which would be that cross-section EAV annotation. If this comes up as zero, then that report didn't work. So you need to go back and rerun that report, or you skip that process. Maybe you came in here and you thought, well, let's just run this. If it comes up empty, then you know that report wasn't run, so you need to go back in there and run that report. Okay, and here's uh, just showing you, we've got the cubic yards and the square feet of, of the end area volumes shown in the graphic table. A little bit of a blow up there, so you can see your square footage, cubic yards, good to go with the end area volumes. Uh, and this is the part I was going to skip because uh, it's really, when we got it, it was beta and it doesn't work very well, but it's a civil labeler tool. And um, in thought, it would be really cool when they fix it, but right now it's broken. I can't get the, well, the slopes they haven't, they haven't fixed. So if you try to use a slope, it don't work. Um, yeah, you can get this through all that and get the civil labeler. It's, it works occasionally. It, it just, it's, again, it's beta. It's, it's not a good tool. Um, I was able to play some stuff out here and Chad's done some setup in here to get these things to work. And uh, yeah, I don't even know if I want to spend any more time on it. It's, it just doesn't work properly. Does sound about right, Chad? Yeah, I mean, we, we went through there and we set up some annotation for it, but like Bill said, you know, it is in beta test format right now. So they, Billy knows that it was there for like a tech preview, but in the next version, they said they upgraded a lot of this stuff to where like, oh, sometimes like this right here where, they, where you have the rotation set to vertical, Sometimes when you actually place the label, it's not vertical, it's at a slant, so it doesn't read it properly and so forth. And it's just kind of sporadic on certain labels that it does it. So um, hopefully they've resolved a lot of that in the next version, but we'll wait and see what happens. 
Yeah, we shall see. So this tells me to stop and go over to the, let me see if I can alt tab over to, you. let's go to project wise. I'll go to project wise for a second. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new file. I don't know what file you guys are in, so it really doesn't matter. Let me get into my file. Where is that? So we're going to create a brand new file and create some name boundaries and, and play with this a little bit so you get used to creating this cross sections. Any questions so far? I can't see the chat, so if there's any questions, somebody let me know if there's anything going on. Okay, so file new. We've done this a few times. Okay, so we'll go to that backstage. Hit that new button. No wizard on this one. And then I, I just, I really like that that source document, you hit the seed file, goes right out to where our seed files are at. That is something we've been wanting for years to do that. It's a 2D seed file, so we're good. If it came up there as a default, that's fine. You can use it. So we're going to call this, uh, let's just call it named underscore boundary. And uh, uh, we'll just do a ORD from behind it just so we, it's just playing around with it just to get it to go. So. You guys get a feel for it. Name boundary ORD. And again, it would be your job number at Northeast, whatever, we'll 3181. We could do that, but this is good enough for here. So I'm going to hit OK. Create that brand new blank file. Hey, Shannon. Yes, sir. One, qu one question. Uh, did you go through the civil, or the, uh, you didn't look at the uh, corridors file, did you? I didn't open it up, no. I, I don't think I did either. I think I need to do that real quick. I referenced I in the yeah. 54. Yeah. Well, well I'm going to use it, but if whatever's referenced in the 54 has to be right, so I don't know if that civil geometry is right in 54, the corridors. Yeah, civil geometry should be fine. Should be okay, you think? I think so. Okay, well, we'll give it a shot. If not, we'll just go from there. Okay, so brand new file. What we like to do is set up our coordinate system. Um, I could do it from a couple, couple different locations. I believe if I go to utilities, yeah, yeah, it's here in utilities as well under the open roads modeling, or you can go down to reality modeling, whatever you need to do to get to it. The, the tools are everywhere. Uh, you'll find that out, but I found it just on the utilities tab, coordinate system, and I'm going to copy it from a file that already has it. Okay. And you'll notice down on the bottom right, I didn't talk about that. Um, at the very bottom right of your, your uh, ORD window, you'll see that there's a world with an X through it. That lets you know if you have a coordinate system attached or not. So ours didn't because we just created a brand new one. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to pick my 54 corridor and just Use that one to copy it from. And I'll, it doesn't matter which one you pick. So I'll hit OK and it fills it out. We'll go ahead and close that dialog. We're finished with setting up our GCS. You can see in the bottom right, it's got a green check mark. We're good to go. So far, so good. Any chat? Anything going on? I know most of it was me talking, but now we're getting into it. Looks good so far. All right. So let's do some uh, referencing. So I want to go to my Home tab, and then go to the Attach Tools icon. And if you use some one of these other ones last, it'll be the last one up there. So you can hit the pull down and hit References. Either way, and should navigate open. It should open up just like I got it here. And we'll do a Tools Attach. This dialog hasn't changed much. Verify you're in your correct folder. I'm gonna look at mine. I'm in Instructor. That's good. And we're going to grab just the corridors route 54 and add that in. OK, just the one file. We're going to use our live nesting. OK. And hit OK. And in here, what I want to do is come down to the nested attachments and change that to live nesting and do a one. 
we don't want to go over one. What it, what this is doing is attaching anything that's attached to that corridor is Route 54. So we had our civil geometry we used for it. We had our terrain. We had super elevation. Everything that's been used in that corridor is 54 is going to come across as a reference as well. If we use two or more than whatever is attached to that, it would look at their references and bring them across. After a while, it gets kind of convoluted. So we'll just leave it at one. Hit the OK button. Let it do its thing. That's great. Doesn't see super elevation. OK. So once it's in here, you'll see that we'll hit a fit view at the top. You'll see it in the background. There's our file. Good to go. But I want to leave this reference dialog open. I want to hit this uh, hierarchy button on the left side. And when I do that, you can move this around so you can see what's in there. And what you're going to see is the name boundary underscore ORD. This is the file that we are in. So we can hit the plus sign and open that up. And this is the file that we referenced in. OK, with the live nesting. So we got our corridors route 54. You hit the plus sign again and it'll show you all the files that came across and evidently it's not finding that super elevation which should be in the folder mm, that's all right it's still attached to the corridor it's still doing its thing okay so it should look like that we'll just go ahead and close it and that gets us in the ballpark so we got our geometry out here i want to make sure and i look at that shane i don't like this already it's just got the wrong terrain yeah you gotta probably have to do the standards thing well, yeah, let me uh, you one or is that the let me see everybody else may have the green one because you went in there and changed that. Yeah, terrain ORD. Let me do that real quick. I could do that. Wow. You guys stay right where you're at. Browse. I did a new file and oh, it was terrain ORD, right? Yeah. OK. Did you reference in the other one? Well, it's what's attached to that. Well, everybody oh. else got it, too. Yeah, everybody else had it. So everybody else would have to do the same thing. Let me see if I can get it to show up without doing that. Let's uh, make it active first. See, we changed some uh, feature definitions to our our terrain. And when I went back and looked at the files yesterday, our files are a little older, what we had for this data set. And uh, they didn't get updated. So now that's why you're seeing the purple magenta instead of the green. But we'll see if... Uh, most of this works anyway. I'm going to do F6. OK, that came across. Looks good there. Let me check the profile. If the profile comes across with the stuff, then I think I'm good. You guys can just watch this for a second. Might have to do it later, but. And it's doing something. OK, yeah, it's the old one. It's the old data. And it's also missing. Um, the references so I don't think it's even seeing that I don't see it at all kind of defeats the purpose so let's do this let's do uh yeah this dang file a couple of things I could do let's let's um Let's all open up the civil jam or the uh, the terrain file. Let's do that. Do they have the ORD attached to their civil to their four, 54, do you think, Shannon? Or we use that in that other file, didn't you? Yeah, totally use different in file. new okay. file, any file. So let's all open up this terrain uh, J5P3181 and look at this real quick. It'd be a good learning moment too. Yeah. Something that you may see sometime where we updates standards and you need to go back and change it. I'm going to check my other file in. I knew I was going to do this, Chad. I knew it. OK. We should be at this file where you've got you know, the terrain file that has the purple magenta. If you're here, what we want to do is we want to just select it. And we want to change that feature definition. Go to properties. 
Right now, I set the existing boundary, which is the wrong feature definition. It's the old one. So we're going to change this to existing triangles. And when I click off in a blank area and zoom in, I can see that that one's got the correct green boundary to it. OK, what I want. But to get the existing boundary feature definition to work correctly, we got to delete one. So what we're going to do. Got any chat, anything going on? Everything good? OK, so we're going to go over to the Explorer button. And we're going to come down to Standards and open that up. And then we're going to open up our terrain standards, our terrain file, the one that we have that we're working on. And then we're going to open up that feature definitions. And we're going to go open up this terrain. Now the one that's out of whack is this existing boundary. OK, so what I'm going to do and what you guys should do too is just right click and delete that. OK, so now that standard's missing and what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the file. Above and when we push changes and stuff, this is something that you may have to do. You're going to right click over this file. And you're going to do update standards from DG and Lib. It takes a second or so. Now when we go out and we select this boundary, we change our properties of it to existing boundary. It should be green, so now it's correct. We'll still have to turn that on in the other file and make sure the level's on because anytime you create something, a new level, the old file doesn't show it, so you have to turn it on. So did everybody get that to work? I hope so. And we're going to browse and go back to. Yeah, yeah Matt, Matt Tobias has a chat that has crashed. Oh, a crash? I can't believe that. <laughs> we'll, wait, we'll wait on Matt. Let's get up to our file we just created. Open up that name boundary ORD and we'll wait, wait on Matt. Check in our changes. OK, I want to see if it fixed it. Come on. And then go to levels and make sure that levels on. There it is. We got a couple of these are stopping site distance. Um, so do you see Matt's back, but he, what do you say? he needs to change the terrain. Yes. OK, he needs okay. to change the terrain. I told him no, you wouldn't go through it again, but why wouldn't I? He's insisting, so. All right, let me go back to that real quick. I'll actually open, I'll go to this one. Do, 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 do. Big thing about that terrain is we want to see our existing ground. We cut cross sections. I mean, we got to have that. OK, so Matt, all I did was to change my. Uh, feature definition from existing boundary. To existing triangle, you could change it to anything. It doesn't matter. OK. And then I clicked off in a blank area. I seen that this is green and that tells me I got the brand new feature definition for the existing triangles, but then we got to get rid of the old. Uh, existing boundary feature definition. So to do that, we go to Explorer. Open up your open road standards. Maybe it wasn't open. Maybe it's something else. Open road standards where you want to go. My bad. I should have said that. And then under standards, you want to go to your file. The one we're in. And then you want to go to feature definitions and open that up. And then we'll open up our terrain. And what we did was we deleted the existing boundary just by right clicking and deleting. 
and it gets rid of that. Once you're done, then you'll go back up to, after you've deleted it, then you go back up to your file and do a right click, update standards from DGN Lib or Lib or whatever you call it, DGN Library. So once you've done that, then you come back out and you grab the edge of this and you change that again from existing triangles to that existing boundary. Click off on a blank area and you should see that it's green now and that's what we want. When you guys create these, when we get our new files and everything, you won't have this issue. It's just that all these files are, we, we when we first started this stuff, these are where they came from and, and some of them even were the old ORD that has to get updated. Did that work for Matt? He said he got it. All right. So now we're going to go back and open that uh, that ORD file we created, the cross section. What did we call it? Name boundary ORD. Open that one up. Check it in. Now, when we cut cross sections, it's always important to have that 3D window open and make sure that everything in that 3D window is what you want to see is and it's available. And right now I can see we got this <laughs> magenta surface out there, which is not right. Let me see if I can reload. some reason ain't picking that one up maybe i'll just turn on the uh and now you can hear my dog great man that's gonna well we'll see what happens but matt what you'll have to do is open up a window eight make sure you can get your existing ground turned on or your uh, profile We'll do that real quick. Profile, populate it in window eight. And when you do that, you see there's, and it's not sticking either. There's no existing ground. So once you do that, we'll go up and hit this uh, level display, filter by used, and turn on our terrain existing. And you'll see the existing ground in there. So that's what we want to see. Look good, Matt. Everything good. We got that existing ground on. And this stuff here, I was going to tell you, it's the stopping site distance uh, information, but it's an old file. So this won't show up. I mean, it will show up, but we can remove this when we create our sheets and we won't see all that Route 54 stuff. So I'll close that out and go back to, let's create some name boundaries. Everything else looks pretty good. We'll, we'll go with it. I don't think we'll do the whole alignment. We don't want it to go for too far. We're at a point, we've got our two windows open. It's important you have the two windows open and we'll be in our 2D view, our window one. And then we'll go to our drawing production tab. So I'm still in open rows modeling workflow, drawing production and the name boundary tool. We'll open that up. Okay. And that's the fourth tool on the uh, top there. We're gonna pick that one, the civil cross section tool. And then our drawing seed we'll do for this one is a 20 scale. Just pick the big one. Okay, detail scale comes across. There's no group yet. We haven't picked anything, but you can see we're out of options really. So what we need to do is come down and read our, our uh, information down here in the status bar. It says identify the element path. So you wanna zoom in and grab that uh, Route 54. Once you select it, now we have a name and we have some start locations. And what we're going to start this is actually, let's do a, uh, let's do 610, right around there. So 610, we'll input plus zero, zero. And this has a station equation in it. So you'll want to put that R2 in it and hit the enter key and it locks it in. So right at 608, there's a station equation. After that, you've got to have your R2s in there. 
your region two. Okay. And then I'm going to come down and change my interval to 100. Okay, everything else looks pretty good. And all you need to do now is read that status bar. It says uh, identify path to start place boundary. So we just go out and we left click. And you can see it's letting us uh, move our mouse around and we're starting to place these, these name boundary. Okay, so I'm going to go to about maybe 625 or so, somewhere around there and left click. Okay, and then again, we want to make sure, let's see, nothing on the vertical exaggeration. Again, you can change the top and bottom clearances if you need to, uh, nothing there. Make sure these are all unchecked, unchecked. And then we can go out and accept um, the data point to accept that placement of the boundary. And it's going to go out and it's going to place them. The name boundaries here, and you're also going to see them in your, your model. And again, like I said in the PowerPoint, what you'd want to do in that 3D window is make it active. And then go to your view attributes and turn on your transparency. When you do that, you can see through it. it makes it much easier, a little bit easier on the eyes. Did everybody get some name boundaries out there? They didn't have to match mine exactly. We're just playing. OK, once we've got name boundaries out there, let's go ahead and create some uh, cross sections. So to do that, uh, you go up to that little bitty button up there, the name boundary manager. Or are they just called name boundaries? What's, what's Matt, usually um, F6 on your keyboard. To get the two views? To get the 3D open. Yeah, if that's not working, just right click and hold. And you can go to view controls. Plan in 3D and that will work. But you got to have those two windows open for it to be able to create these name boundaries. I'll bring that tool back up. You can see when I do this, it's ready to create a, a route 55. It's ready to do a different one. Um, but I can change it to add it to 54. This group and maybe move them. Your left or right offset a little bit. Just making sure Matt gets there. So that's all we did was this. Started around 610 R2 space R2. And then I just data click the ending and it picks up the R2. Make sure these are unchecked. Include control points backward facing and create drawing. OK, so I'll close out of that. OK, so now that brings us to name uh, name boundary manager or name boundaries. Click the button. Here we are. We've got all our name boundaries in here. The ones that we created are these cross sections. You can open them up and you can see you can resize the dialog however you want. You see all the name boundaries that we created. Every hundred foot. The important button to have on before you do anything is to show the create drawing dialog. So we'll check toggle that on. Don't look like it's toggled too much at light color, but we want to select the 54. Um, group. When you do that, you get all the other options, whether you want to delete them or create cross sections. And so at this point in time, we want to just do a create cross section drawing and make sure that pencil and the squ squirrely lines there. Make sure they're on. And when we hit this button, it's going to bring up our next dialog. Now again, at the top, we we keep all our cross sections in one file. OK, so we, we don't do the one sheet per DGN. I'm going to leave my view name alone. All this is good. Uh, the drawing uh, model name, I'm going to leave that alone. The only thing I want to do in here is change our annotation group so we can do that. And you'll have hey, to. Bill. Yeah. Uh, Matt's getting a 3D model containing civil data must exist in order to create the civil. Did he make his uh, existing ground active? 
Survey says. We might have to have Matt share a screen. That was it. It was it? Okay. Okay, so I'll wait till he gets those. Uh, let me go back to the other dialogue. Cancel. Close that. Matt, we just did the 20 scale and then picked the alignment. We'll give it a start offset, 610 plus 00, zero R2. And then we just, I just clicked out there around 625 to end the stop station. So you'll input this in there, left click to start it, and it'll be rubber banded from your cursor. We did change our interval to 100. You can do it even after you've started doing this. Um, if the rubber banding from your cursor, you can still change that to whatever you need. It will adjust on the fly. And then let's see, everything else looks the same. We're good. Nothing in there. And then the next thing you'll do is go to your 3D window, your view attributes, and turn on transparency. See if that works. Is he all good? I think so. Seems like it. Okay. Okay, back to the name boundary manager. Or name boundaries, whatever they want to call it. I want to call it manager because that's what I'm doing. Again, all we have in here for name boundaries is a cross-section group. We'll open that up. We have Route 54 in here. We can open that up and see all the different um, name boundaries we have. Uh, we're going to select Route 54. We're going to verify that the show the create dial a drawing dialog is on. You can tell by the faint blue color in the background. If you're colorblind, I don't know what to say. We're in trouble. Okay, so once you have that selected, you can either hit this icon up here or you can right click and choose it from there. I'll just hit the icon and we'll sit back and watch the progress bar down here in the bottom. Oh, no, we won't. We got to fix it. Finish this. We were at this point. I forgot. Is Matt at this point? I think probably so. OK, all right. So I'm going to leave the view name the same where it's at. I'm not going to touch any of this stuff. All that's good. Good information is all defaulted the way it's supposed to be. The only thing I want to do is check this annotation group and we're creating cross sections. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up our cross section folder, our drawing folder, and let's do it with uh, with the grid. We'll do excess annotation with grid so we get it all. OK. And then the next thing we want to do is go all the way down to open the model and that's it. We're good to go from here so we can hit the make sure that's checked on. And this is that add to sheet indexing thing. So all these sheet models that you create can be added to that sheet index. So you could do that again. Um, uh, we're still work, work, working on some of that for the. For it to work right, but we'll go ahead and hit the OK. Down here in the bottom, you'll see it. The progress bar going. Now again, these uh, cross sections are dynamic. So if we went in and we changed our profile, maybe we had to lift it up six inches or whatever. After your sheet's already been cut, you can go in there and you'll see that everything's moved. The only thing you'd have to do, or even if you added a template, or changed the template, change your fill slope, you know, you did something in there. Whatever you've done, all you'd have to do is go back, remove the annotation, and then reapply the annotation. The annotation is the thing that's not dynamic. 
Okay, but everything else is dynamic as far as it works. Okay, so I've got mine to process. I see a cross section plan sheet with two cross sections in there. I can close out my name boundary manager. I'm done with it. And you can see this is our sheet. This is the sheet model it opened up to. So I want to go into a drawing model. That's what I want to do. So again, I'm going to use this down here at the bottom. And you can see there's a scroll bar. You can scroll wherever you want to go. Drawing models are the ones with the gray backgrounds to them. So let's go to maybe 612. I'll go. Open that one up and here it is. So I can't see much. I got that. Uh, all that grid line in there, grid work. So um, let's we could change that. We can remove that and change it. So, but did everybody get cross sections to run? They, they got a file that looks kind of like mine. And we're in that drawing model. We see our proposed, we see our existing, we're good. OK. <clears throat> Up here is the drawing model annotation pull down. You've got either remove the drawing model annotations. And Shannon was talking about that a minute ago about element annotation and the models. Well, here we're going to use the model. We're going to get rid of some of that stuff. So I'm going to remove the drawing model annotation. It's going to ask me, do I want to uh, remove them all? Just for showing you how it works, I'm not for right now. I'll, I'll either check this uh, uh, on for yes or up down arrows for yes, no, but I'm going to leave it at no. I'm just going to un just remove it from this model. And then I'll click it and you can see all we got is our proposed and our existing ground. So what that allows us to do now is to go out and place more annotation. OK, so if I want to annotate the model, I go back up to this pull down drawing annotation. And go to annotate drawing model. And here, do I want to do them all? Uh, not really. I just took them off of this one, so I'll accept this. And then I can pick whichever cross section. Um, annotation I want to see, so I'll just do the major grid only on this one. OK, so you just navigate down, hit the three buttons. And then all you have to do is blank in a blank area, just accept that. And it's going to process and it's going to give us our major grid lines. So that works pretty good. And if I wanted none of them, I can remove the drawing annotations. I'll just do it for this one again. And then I can do the option of annotate drawing model. Um, no again, and then pick under cross sections drawing. I want to do without grid. And then when I left click to accept it, it goes out and places our elevations, our state, our station offsets. It gives us our slopes in there, everything. Now, this is the file that you'd be doing uh, any notes or anything. If you had notes you want to place in here, you would you would put them in here and they would show up in that. Um, that sheet model. So if I go to the sheet 612 model that I have here and open it up, you'll see that I didn't change this one, but I can see the changes re are reflected from the one that I did change. Normally you do them all, but I just wanted to show you the difference between them. OK, everybody get that to work. Any questions down there, Shannon? You see anything? Nope, looks good. OK. So that's basically how we do our cross sections. There's more um, advanced stuff with it that I'll get into. I've got videos out there like Chad, Chad was showing you all the links to the videos. We've got we got videos for this stuff. Uh, let's see. Next thing I want to do is go back to PowerPoint for a second.